Hello there, folks. Hey, this is Joe Wazoo here. Hey, today I'm going to do a little demo of a pump lag lead or lead lag configuration. A customer called the other day and they wanted an application where they could turn on the first pump. And then if the pressure drops below some set point, they want to turn on a second pump. And then if the pressure goes back above that set point, just keep pump one running and vice versa. If I turn on pump two first and the pressure drops, turn on pump one and vice versa. So this is the display page. Let me go over here to data tags. Let me show you what I got going on here. So I uh, created some tags. I have a pressure tag here. First of all, this is allowing me to simulate the pressure. And that's just an internal tag here for this example. And then I've got two flag tags, pump one and pump two. Notice they're flag tags. That's because they're discrete on off. So those are gonna be our pumps. And then I always go a little extra uh, on here. If I just use pressure, it stays as a constant number. I always like things to flutter a little bit to kind of look like they're real. So I've added another folder here called simulate tags. And let me show you something. I've got I got a, a tag here, integer, called flutter. And it's yellow because it's just a random generator between 0 and 4 or 0 and 5. But if the number goes between 0 and 4, just using this random function. That's all it is. That's why it's yellow. And then if I go over here to this other tag called simulate, notice here says pressure simulation tag and it's a complex code so i've hit the edit button here it'll show you what i'm doing so i'm doing nothing but returning this tag here plus the flutter so this will end up causing uh the the tag to just change a little bit that make looks like it's real but that's what i'm doing there uh so that's that and then i've got set point here uh, i got a timer delay i'll talk about that uh, and, and timer and so forth in here so let me go ahead and show you what we got going on here so here's our display page Here's the pressure that I'm going to put in, and this is going to simulate, and then this is the set point. And so if I turn on the pump, you're going to see a pump goes on, and if I make the pressure simulate drops below the set point, it should turn on this. And I'm doing this through some code. Let me go ahead and fire this up first. So here's the demo. So let's say we put a set point in of, say, 100, for instance. Notice the pressure. See how it's kind of fluctuating? That's that little flutter I like. Now here's a neat trick here I did too. This is a number, but if I click on this, the keyboard comes up. Now see how this is a constant number. So if I put in, say, 125, for instance, you can see it shows up. This is interesting. Watch what I did here. I got two things going on right here. This is, if I double click on this guy and go here to the data tab, you can see that's the simulate tag. Okay, that's just that number that's simulating. However, if you look at the whole field, the whole field, this whole thing here, and if you look down here, you get some cheaters. See there? So now if I double click on the whole thing, look what I'm doing. I'm using the label text, making a data entry, but I'm not showing the number. So this is kind of cool because it pulls up the keyboard, but then the simulate number will show here. So that's what's going on there. Anyway, let's go back to our demo here. So here it is running. You can see the pressure's at 125. My set point's here. So if I turn on my pump one, you can see the pump one's on. You can see here I've got let me raise this up a little bit higher just so that we get a different line here on my chart okay so there you can see that now if the pressure drops below the red line it should fire at pump number two so if we put this at say 105 for instance we'll see the blue line just drop a little bit below there uh oops well that's fascinating oh ah i forgot about my timer <laughs> so there was a little latency there because the uh, I had a delay in there. I've got a delay. So at first, the guy wanted to put a delay in. If I set this to zero, and if we put this back up, let's take it to uh, 135. So you can see that pump number two turned off. Pump number one is still running. And if I go below that number, immediately, this guy turned on right away. So I took that delay out of the equation. But let's go back here. All right. You also see here there's a pump lead. And it says pump one lead. So if I turn this guy off, now there's no pump chosen. If I go ahead and say, this time I want to start with pump number two. So I can manually do pump number two. And again, take this below my set point. You'll see that pump one turns on. And you'll see, you're actually seeing here the lag lead. So here, this is the pump number two is leading. And now pump one follows. And of course, if I raise this above, You'll see that uh, pump number one went off because it was the lagging pump. 
So that's how that application works. Let's go look at the code though. That's where the real excitement happens. So over here, I've got some code. And the first thing I'm doing here is I have a program called lag lead choice. Find out what pump was turned on first. So I'm asking the question here. Uh, I'm assuming that both pumps are off from the get-go. That's the first thing here from when we start. So I'm asking here if pump one is turned on and pump two is turned off, zero and one, then obviously pump lead equals one. I have, a, I have an integer tag over here called pump lead. And then the other situation is, okay, well, if pump one is zero and pump two goes on, then I'm in the pump two lead format. And then down here, if neither of them on, then there's no pump started, so pump lead equals zero. And then after all that's done, we execute the programs that determine where they drop below the set point. So this program here, this is another thing that's interesting. If I right click on it and do find usage, you're gonna see that we're only calling this program I'm doing this in the on tick. I could certainly do it in on update, but I'm doing on tick. So I'm just calling that one program here. And ironically, down here, it calls the other two programs. So let's go look at our other two programs. So pump one lead, let's say if pump one, if the pump lead equals one, which means that pump one is in, in first, then I'm saying, all right, if the thing is on, and then I say, well, if it drops below the set point, do this timer. Now, if timer equals zero, it bypasses that. Once it goes above that, it turns on the second pump if it drops below the set point. If not, down here, if the pressure is greater than set point, it turns off pump two and I had to reset the timer. That's the pump one lead program. Also, I'll show you pump two. It's exactly the same logic, except that I've inverted pump two and the pump one equation. And it's the same exact logic in this guy. I added something new in here as well. <clears throat> Let's see if I get my arrow to work. I put uh, a, a slash slash number one or number two or number three or number four in here. And the reason I'm doing that, folks, in here is because I'm trying to, to match the open squiggly bracket with the closed squiggly bracket. So that's what I'm doing here in this sequence. I thought I'd add this in here for, for this program. So that's how that works and a pretty neat little application. The other thing here that you might notice is on the trend viewer, let me go back to the web page here, team. On the trend viewer, if I turn this guy off, these are discrete signals. And normally a discrete goes between zero and one. And as you watch here, if I turn this guy on, and then let's say we do this other one here again. You'll see that one goes on. See how they're a little bit different heights? Like the yellow line is here, and the green line's here. Again, they're usually zero to one. Let me show you what I'm doing here. Over in data tags, I've got some trend viewer tags. And you know something interesting? They're integers. See the X? They're both integers. And all I did here, team, is I went ahead and took my uh, pump one and I drug it out here. Now remember, pump one and pump two are discrete or flag tags, so they're just zero one. But I drag it here out here. And then on the format tab, I gave that guy a min and max of zero to two. And if I go click on pump number two, you'll see zero to three. And this part here, is what causes the y-axis of this. So that allows them to be offset just a little bit so that we can actually see different lines in here run it. So if I turn this guy off, I can't do that because pump two is the lead, so I have to manually turn off pump two first. Well, I can't because the code's running. Let me get this above the set point here, hold on. There, that'll let do it. And then I can turn this off. And now if I turn on pump number one, the green line, you'll see it goes on there. And let's, for instance, this one, let's add a delay of just, say, three seconds, for instance. So I'll put three in. So now when it drops below the set point, we're going to see our timer count to three. Let's see what happens here. And you'll see after three seconds, it went ahead and turned on that line. So that's exactly what we want. And then, of course, if I go back up. And now I can turn it off. So. That's a pretty simple application on lag lead. If you're interested in a copy of this database, uh, feel free to just send me an email or post something and, and tell me you want the GO9 lag lead pump control program. I'll be glad to share it with you. Hey, thanks a lot, folks. Have a great day.